it's hard getting that phone call, you know, when on Christmas Eve, especially. I don't know if there's ever a good time to get that phone call. And uh, we heard how bad the accident was, and they brought Ben to Gunderson Lutheran because of the higher trauma center here at Gunderson. And we were here in the intensive care unit for three weeks, and then he was up on peds for a week. And then they sent him to a hospital in St. Paul, Bethesda in St. Paul. And he was there, they're a brain institute, um, a coma stimulation program to bring him out of the coma. And once he was out of the coma, he came back to Gunderson Lutheran for inpatient rehab. And we were here for three months. They worked with Ben, I and mean, when he came from Bethesda, he couldn't walk, he couldn't talk, um, he couldn't feed himself, he couldn't move his right side of his body. Um, and here at rehab, they taught him how to do everything. They had to teach him how to swallow again. Um, they worked very hard, side by side, encouraged him every step of the way. I, I mean, I you can't even begin to, to express your thankfulness, you know, as a parent, you just have to step aside. You know, you, you're you the cheer team and you have no idea how to, you know, take care of it. You can't put a Band-Aid on this. You know, Ben had a, what they call a diffuse axonal injury and brainstem injury. And that means he had brain damage to the entire brain. He had pinpoint hemorrhages throughout his whole entire brain and brainstem. So he wasn't just limited to one area of the brain. Um, his right side was affected. Uh, he, like I said, he couldn't talk. He couldn't move his right arm. He couldn't move his right leg. Um, it actually, in the beginning, he couldn't move his left side either. Um, that showed signs right away. And here at rehab, they just, you know, first of all, taught him how to swallow <laughs> so he could get his feeding tube taken out. And then Vicki here at the speech therapy, um, really worked hard on getting him to talk. She knew that he had speech praxia and that he could recall the ability to speak but could not actually get the, the function from the brain to the mouth um, to respond and make noise. Then once he was talking, it was all kind of, you know, then he could express to us that he was dizzy. He had um, vestibular therapy. We didn't re realize he had vertigo until he could actually tell us that he was dizzy. We just part thought it was part of the brain injury. So Dr. Kerrigan here, um, in re right here in rehab, was able to do vestibular therapy, which then the walking was much easier. You know, teaching him how to walk was much easier after that. Uh, it didn't take Ben long. As soon as he started figuring out, you know, it just like was everything was snapping into place. It was a lot of hard work for him, he, but he loved the hard work. He was used to it. You know, he was a wrestler in high school, and he's used to the hard work. And he actually enjoyed the competitiveness of it. You know, push me harder. You know, and he loved seeing. You know, he loved seeing the results of his hard work. So it pushed him on even harder. And Ben, through this whole thing has had the most positive attitude, and he has never, never faltered once in his attitude. He just, as he said, he just strived forward. That was his goal, striving forward, even if it was small steps. It was kind of a funny thing, and both me and Troy said it. Um, I, one of the days when we were in ICU, we walked out of the ICU room and we had just gotten some really bad news from um, one of the doctors and they told us that they didn't think Ben was going to wake up and me and Troy just walked down the hallway and we were going back to our room and it was just like a feeling. It just kind of, I don't know what it was, I can't even explain the kind of feeling it was. And I, I just kind of stopped and Troy looked at me and he's like, what? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what just happened. I said something just kind of came over me. I said, this is going to be a long, hard road, but he's going to be okay. And if I have a bad attitude, oh, sorry. <laughs> if I have a bad attitude, Ben's going to feel that and he's going to know it. And he's going to have a bad attitude. 
you know, and if he's not complaining, I have nowhere to complain. So we just work together, work hard. Keep a very positive attitude. Keep your faith in God. Um, keep your faith in the patient. Never give up. There's always hope. You can always strive forward for a positive ending. It doesn't stop. Ben is still, you know, here we are almost eight months later, and he is still making steps forward. They may be smaller than they used to be, but he's still making forward steps. It's hard work. We don't know. We, you know what, with a, a brain injury, especially a diffuse axonal injury, um, they give a healing time of about 18 months. And they, from the beginning, it's been a question mark. I and mean, you can never know with a brain injury what's going to heal and what's not going to heal. It's a big question mark. But he works hard every day to make it as positive and life as normal as possible. We, all, we call it our new normal. Every day is just a new normal. I don't even know of a simple thank you to the rehab staff, the nursing staff, the doctors, PT, OT, speech, vestibular, and there's, I don't even know if you could begin with a, just a simple thank you. I mean, they took my family under their wing and showed us what to do, and they he helped heal my son. I don't think you could ever say thank you enough for that. We love them like family. I mean, they are truly like a family to us now.